Hello everyone and welcome back. So far we have observed the ambiguous context free grammars, the problems caused by the ambiguous grammars and the ways to resolve those. During this journey we came to know that associativity and precedence is the key to that. So in this session we will try to apply the knowledge that we have gained. All right then. Without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today at first, we will learn to determine the associativity and the precedence of different operators from a given CFG. Thereafter, we will convert an ambiguous grammar to its equivalent unambiguous version. Consider this grammar. In this, we have the non terminals E, T, F, and G. And the terminals are this plus symbol, then this multiplication operator, this caret symbol, and finally this ID. The start symbol is this uppercase E. Now we have to determine the associativity and the precedence of the operators plus, into, and caret are raised to the power operator. In order to determine the associativity of the operators, we need to examine the production rules carefully and one by one. Let's begin with the first rule that is, E can either be rewritten as E plus T or T. Observe this rule. As you can notice, the non terminal itself is reoccurring as the leftmost non terminal in the right hand side. So clearly, it is left recursive and therefore the operator plus is left associative. Now observe the second rule. T can be rewritten as T into F or F. So this rule contains the multiplication operator. In here, the variable t is again reappearing as the leftmost variable in the right hand side. So, clearly, this multiplication operator is also left associative. Consider the third one. f can either be rewritten as g caret f or g raised to the power f or g. Now, in case of this one, f is reoccurring as the rightmost non terminal of this portion. So, the operator caret is naturally right associative. Since we are done determining the associativity of the operators, let's now figure out the precedence order. Now, in order to determine the precedence, we need to judge all the production rules at once. By the way, we will determine the precedence order in a decreasing manner, that is, from high to low. Notice carefully, observe. Among all these production rules, the third one has got the caret operator. So its precedence is the highest. Now the reason for that is, since E here is the start symbol, it can generate T. Then from T, we can generate F. And thereafter, from F, we can generate this caret operator. So clearly, caret will always be derived at the lowest level. And that makes this operator of the highest priority. Now in the rule before this, we have the multiplication operator, so it will have the second highest priority. Finally, in the first rule itself, we have the addition operator, therefore it has the lowest order of precedence. So from this grammar, we have determined the associativity by judging the production rules containing the operators one at a time. Then we determine the precedence of the operators by examining all the production rules at once. So, the further the operators in terms of production rules serial numbers, the higher the precedence. Let's now resolve the next problem. Consider the following ambiguous CFG on Boolean expressions. So, a Boolean expression or BEXP can be rewritten as a Boolean expression and another Boolean expression, or it can be rewritten as a Boolean expression or another Boolean expression or not a Boolean expression or it can be true or false. The precedence of the Boolean operators are not and then or, high to low. That is not is the highest precedence wise, then and and then the Boolean operator with the lowest precedence is or. Also, the operators and or have the left to right associativity. Now, the precedence of the Boolean operator R is the lowest, hence the first rule would be Boolean expression can be rewritten as Boolean expression or Boolean expression. Now, the operator AND has the second highest precedence, hence 
The second rule would be Boolean expression can be rewritten as Boolean expression and Boolean expression. Now the third rule will have to be the operator with the highest precedence. Therefore, it would be Boolean expression can be rewritten as not Boolean expression. So the fourth one is Boolean expression can be rewritten as true. And the fifth one would be Boolean expression can be rewritten as false. Now notice these two production rules. In both the cases, the operators have the same non-terminals in both the sides of them. Productions like this lead to ambiguity. It's given that the operators AND and OR are left associative. So let's update the first rule accordingly. Let the modified rule be Boolean expression BEXP can be rewritten as BEXP or BEXP1 that is another Boolean expression. Observe, now in this rule, the non-terminal BEXP is reappearing as the leftmost non-terminal in the right-hand side. So, it has now been turned into a left recursive production. Hence, the left associativity of the Boolean operator OR is now ensured. Let's modify the second one. So, BEXP1 can be rewritten as BEXP1 and BEXP. Here also, the reoccurrence of BEXP1 in the right hand side of the production as the leftmost non terminal is ensuring the left associativity of the AND operator. Not only this, for the sake of uniformity, we will also modify this non terminal as BEXP2. Do not worry, AND is still left associative. Now, maintaining the uniformity, let's update the third rule as well. So, the third one becomes BEXP2 can be rewritten as NOT BEXP2. Let's repeat the same update for the fourth and the fifth one as well. So, BEXP2 can be rewritten as TRUE and the same can also be rewritten as FALSE. Now, remember the Boolean expression or BEXP could be rewritten as any one of these. To facilitate the same in the unambiguous version, we will need to add a couple of more rules. At first, we will need the rule BEXP can be rewritten as BEXP1. Then again, Boolean expression 1 can be rewritten as Boolean expression 2. Notice, now from the start symbol BEXP, we now can derive any one of these. So the final unambiguous set of production rules would be the first one. Boolean expression can either be rewritten as Boolean expression or Boolean expression 1 or Boolean expression 1. Then the second one is Boolean expression 1 can be rewritten as Boolean expression 1 and Boolean expression 2 or Boolean expression 2. Finally, Boolean expression 2 can either be rewritten as not Boolean expression 2 or true or false. So, this is how we can convert an ambiguous grammar into an unambiguous one. Interesting, right? Alright then, let's have a homework problem. Consider the following ambiguous CFG on regular expressions. R can be rewritten as R plus R or R dot R or R clean star closure or A or B or C. The precedence of the operators are clean star dot or and and plus or or high to low. That is, clean star has the highest precedence, then and and at last or. Also, all the operators have left to right associativity. So, the rules involving them should be left recursive in the unambiguous version. Feel free to write down your answers in the comment section. So, in this session, we first learned how to determine the associativity and precedence from a given CFG. And then we converted an ambiguous grammar to its unambiguous version. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the upcoming sessions, we will observe some solved previous year questions. So, I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.